Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and Forged Irish Stout. Delighted as always to be joined by Jamie Moore. Jamie, look, we're here in Belfast. I know you've got um, Cameron Vaughan on the card, a little superstar that you've got at the gym at the minute who's made a great start to his pro career. Before we talk about him and other news, um, obviously I've got to start in Dublin last week. A historic night, terrific atmosphere. The result didn't go Chantel's way, but just give me your initial reaction to... Obviously, Katie Taylor, you know, gaining the titles. Yeah, of course, it was a, it was a great fight. You know, it was a very close fight. Could have gone either way, and um, unbelievable atmosphere again in there. Um, and Katie won it on a close, on a close decision. You know, it's um, we never expected to get a close decision over there. You know, obviously home advantage and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, it was um, it was a close fight, and she she edged it out. I've got a touch on the. The, lot of the talking points just quickly before we move on from it um, there was the I wouldn't want to say alleged knockdown because it, look, it looks on the replays that she should have had a knockdown scored yeah, yeah. and there was questions over um, Katie's um, holding and the head clashing um, I think it was a video came out of you after in the referees yeah, yeah, yeah. meeting highlighting this before and look I'm saying this out of, not out of disrespect because Katie won the fight so it's not taking anything away oh, but exactly. let's let's just talk on that is it disappointing so, that you've gone over there and that's gone against you and especially when well, the, the margins are so thin first of all yeah I've said this lots of times in the build up to both fights I've got a huge amount of respect for Katie for what she's done for what she is the type of person she is it's not it's nothing that, that video what I put out there was for people to understand that I'd highlighted it with the referee before and, and I wanted him to make sure that I stuck to the rules of boxing properly. It's nothing to do with Katie. I'm not calling Katie a cheat because that, that the whole point of the referee being there is to enforce the rules. Fighters get away with stuff all the time and you're going to push the boundaries. You know, my kids when they were growing up, if they wanted to do something, they'd push the boundaries to the point where you go, right, stop that now. And that's exactly what it is in boxing. I mentioned this before, you know, Jack Catterall got warned for holding in Josh Taylor fight towards the end of it. Um, and, you know, not boxed for 15 months and maybe fatigue was kicking in a little bit. The referee warned him a couple of times and then took a point off, you know. And a lot of people thought it was valid. A lot of people thought it was a bit early. But he enforced the rules. That's what he's supposed to do. I'm not saying Katie broke the rules and, and like... Um, Purpose, purposely, I'm not saying she headbutted Chantal, I'm saying there was dangerous movement with her head and there was no warning. There certainly was about the warning, uh, the holding, there was no warning. So that stops my fighter from being able to do her best work up close. So not by any stretch of imagi imagination am I saying she cheated. N far from it. Not She's referee. The referee was, was th in, uh, in my book, and again, it's all opinions. In my opinion, the referee didn't do his job properly. Moving away from it, ever so slightly. They do share a victory over each other. Now, I know Chantel's a very proud woman and I'm sure this defeat is, is, is sickening to her and she'll go away, regroup her. I spoke to Frank Smith earlier and I said, look, although Katie Taylor's always linked with the Serrano rematch, that was one of the best fights I'd seen live in, in Dublin. It was a yeah. terrific fight. Yeah. Surely the third one's on board and they're talking about Ireland again. Would you have any reservations of going back to Ireland with what's happened or is it a case of opportunity, money, timing, titles? So, so just if we, if we move away just for one second from from the venue, we, you, you're talking about two women who who were fantastic fighters, unbelievable fighters, who were who were sort of spearheading the game in many ways, and 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 putting a lot of men to shame to be honest. The way they went out the other night, it was absolutely unbelievable. So, you know, a trilogy for women is a first. It's never been done before. It's just it's huge now because it's one all, and you know, I've never seen anybody be involved in a trilogy that gets home advantage every time. Mm. Now I'd be disappointed if because I understand Katie Taylor is a huge draw in Ireland and you know in America stuff like that, um, but but Chantel. By more than plays her own part in this because without Chantel, there's no fight like there was on Saturday night. So, I, I, if if I'm not saying I want it in Northampton because I understand I'm, from a business point of view, it doesn't make sense. I understand all that, but there's other venues in the world, i.e., in the Middle East, where they're putting up huge sums of money to put on fights like that. And the reason people are going there is because there's that 
financial incentive to go there. So if if the gate is the issue, if if the reason you go to Ireland is because Kate is the the seller yeah. and that brings in the money, then that sort of takes away the argument if you're going to go somewhere like Abu Dhabi mm -hmm. or Saudi or Dubai or somewhere in in the UAE. So um, so you know if Chantal wants to fight that much and and they're absolutely adamant it'd be in Dublin, I'm not sure whether she would go for it because I know she feels really hard done by. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying she would, I'm not saying she wouldn't, I can't speak for Chantel. I know for a fact, if they said, okay, we'll do it in neutral ground in Abu Dhabi, sure. she'd go absolutely no problem. Well, look, I think it's fair to say, just to finish off on this, it was, it's been a terrific rivalry. It's been a fight that many people were wanting for years. Chantel's got a victory. You Kate has now got there. a victory. You can't leave it there. Go on. You can't leave it there, can you? Let's let's be honest. You know, nobody thought Katie would fight Shan, so that's why everyone was surprised when she called her out initially. Mm -hmm. It was a big risk, and and I said it at the time, it was a huge risk for Katie, and it didn't pay off for her. Absolute huge credit to her for going. No, I want the rematch straight away, but she got home advantage, and to her credit, she performed way better, which I knew she would. And in my eyes, me, my own opinion, is the referee allowed her to get away with holding, which helps her get through the second part of the fight and come, come out of the victory. And you can't leave that story there. No, and for it to happen again, obviously, I'm sure there'll be extensive conversations about officials, where they're from, um, just to obviously put, I suppose, not just you guys, but Chantel's mind at ease when she's yeah, obviously won the first fight and she's like... Right, so I've got to go back again. I've got to defend my titles again because her big gripe when she said to me goes, "That's f I'd like to you know fight some other titles now." Like yeah. it's always felt like it was always me, but this is quite a different angle now, though, isn't it? Because she's she'd be going in there with her first loss as the challenger again. But you know, the the fact of the matter is, the boxing fans want to see the best fights. So for a, for a start, it was a great fight to watch, and. That rivalry, people love that type of rivalry. You can't beat it. Katie going into a rematch with Serrano would be so intriguing because of what happened in the first fight, and it was a real close fight. But there's not the story, there's not that underlying story to it now. And these, Chantel and Katie is a huge fight in the third fight. I think one thing I said, because it was the first fight I'd been to as a fan for years, obviously doing this job, you don't really, yeah. you don't really get it. But I said, look, I'll come over because I didn't get to see the first one. And I said to my mate, I said, I could watch this 10 times over. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. God willing, the stars align, um, things work out for both parties and we get that fight over the line. Moving on from this situation now then, um, you've got Cameron Vaughan on this card. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen all his fights so far, um, exciting, has that bit of flash, dealt with a very awkward opponent last time. Um, yeah. Said to him, one of the most awkward things I've seen in the ring, the way he moved and yeah. the way he tried stalling it, but he showed a mature head for someone so young. How pleased yeah. are you with Cameron to this point and what can the people in Belfast expect Saturday? Yeah, really pleased. You know, he's, he's phenomenal on his debut. Second fight, uh, Real tricky customer. I told the matchmaker and, and Sam Jones when they put him through as the opponent, I said, listen, he'll win this fight, but it's a real, it's not an easy fight, it's a handful. And, um, you know, a couple of the fights what I watched of him to, to, to sort of get a gauge of what he was like, he lost him, but he'd not, he'd won him. So so his record was real sort of deceptive. Um, but lessons took from it. I liked his composure. I liked the way he could adjust mid-fight, which is a good trait to have, especially for a young, young, young lad like him. So, so I'm excited about his future, and uh, you know, he loves this game. He absolutely lives for it. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it when you speak to him. He's buzzing just to be part of the fight week, the build-up. He's, in, he's interviewing. He's embracing it all. Um, I interviewed Michael Conlon. I've done it this week, but it was the interview before in Surrey. And we were running through the card and saying, look, Conlon boxing, the way you're pushing the Irish yeah. scene. And like I said, Cameron Vong's now been added to the card. And he said, I like him. He yeah. says, very good fighter. If he keeps his feet on the ground and does yeah. everything right, yeah. he yeah. says, he'll go far. Do you, is that, is that that's, sound? That, that's the way I summarised it before in, in, a, in a different interview is, you know, I understand Sam and Eddie pushing him and, and bigging him up. And that's their job. My job is to keep his feet on the ground and make sure he keeps him, keeps him there, level-headed. He understands that a lot of it is hype and, and people are pushing him for, for a reason, but he needs to understand, he needs to a reality check and make sure that he keeps his feet on the ground. And, and he is doing, he's a, he's a good kid, he's a nice kid. And uh, um, it's, it's been difficult for me coming here this week because like, you know, when you come off the back of such a big, massive occasion like that, and, and it's easy 
when you come in off a win. Mm. When you're coming in off a loss, and especially with Shan, me and Shan are really close, and uh, I've been gutted for her, you know, like really sick for her. So, and I, and I was so looking forward, I love Belfast, it's such a great place, and I'm so looking forward to coming to we camp. But it's so hard, you know, as, as coaches, when you, you have that sort of low, and you're gutted, but we can't sit around for weeks and, and sort of gather your thoughts and readjust and get things. You have to, for your fighter's sake, sort of perk back up and just crack on as if nothing's happened. You have to wear a mask in a way. And um, so it's been really difficult, but Cam is like, as soon as he got here, he's like a bundle of energy. He, 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 you feed off him, do you know what I mean? So so even though I came over and I was sort of a bit, bit down in the dump still and stuff like that, straight away he's just got me back on cloud nine. So uh, he's a good kid, he's good, he's good to be around. I'm going to say, I saw him before the Newcastle press conference and I think it was Jordan Banjo there and he started trying to moonwalk and I just thought, this kid's got, he's got a bit of summer, he must be, he must be good to be around. Yeah, ADHD, that's what he's got, he just, <laughs> he just, he just cannot calm down and, uh, you know, fair play to him. He, he, honestly, he is really good to have around and uh, his energy is contagious. Mm -hmm. So, um, and every now and again I do have to say, Sam, calm the fuck down now, you know what I mean? But, but you know, nine times out of ten he's, he's good as gold. I think Sam said something different, he goes, fuck it. He goes, he's bouncing off the wall, he's ready to go. And he just goes, as I said, it's good though, I suppose, early on in his career. Um, look, let's touch on Jack Cattrall. I spoke to Frank Smith earlier and said, look, he needs a big fight now. We've, you know, what, where are we at with it? Everyone barks on about a Taylor fight, but you've pro Gray Haney fighting, yeah. the options are there, and sort of we're trying to get a bit of an update. But he says they're trying to work on a fight. How is Jack? How's he getting along? Is he ticking over now, waiting yeah. for sort of news? He's always in the gym. He's always he's always ticking over. Um, he's going to Haney and Pro Grey, so he's going to be there ringside. Um, I've not heard anything for a, for a couple of weeks about the Taylor fight. Um, you know, we was up for it. It just depends on what weight he's at because I hear that Taylor's going to be, be moving up. So, um, so, I mean, I think this Jose Ramirez has been mentioned. Yeah. So, so, so that's a a, a good fight. Obviously, all around, geared around final eliminators for world titles and stuff. So, he's there or thereabouts, and something will happen. It's just everything, things have got to fall into place. And, and listen, I like the Taylor fight because, again, going back to what we were talking about with, with Katie and Shan, Narrative, isn't it? it's a massive fight because there's a story behind it. And um, and it is a big fight without a world title fight on the line, uh, without a world title on, on the line. So, so, if they can come to a deal, then, then great, but if not, he moves on and he, he gets either another eliminator for a world title, um, or fingers crossed, he can get a straight shot. Yeah, I think, yeah, he, he, des he deserves a shot at a world title now after you know the delays, the inactivity, and obviously it's good that he's with Matchroom and he's been pushed a little bit now, but hopefully we do see that Taylor rematch, it'll be huge down the line. Um, look, Jamie, um, appreciate you giving us some of your time. Just quickly, Michael Conlon, Jordan Gill. Yeah. Um, I know... Michael comes into this as the favourite, but there's huge implications, both coming back off a knockout. Mm. Um, it's a hard one to say, careers on the line, depending on how they both feel, but it really is like a hard way back for the loser. How do you see the fight? Yeah, I mean, both are coming, you know, changing camps in a way, and, you know, bring, bringing in different people as well, which is always a gamble because you never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes it has a real positive impact. Sometimes they're not quite the same and it takes a few fights to get into learning to um, get into the gist of being with a new coach. So Mick Conlon's class. Um, Jordan Gill's a very good fighter as well. But I think that's the thing is th the level of it. And I think Mick's sort of the better class fighter. Um, they know each other. So they spar a lot of rounds together, which means that there'll be none of that feeling out process. They know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, and a lot of the time, it ends up a real good fight. Uh, but there is a big difference between doing it with 14-ounce gloves and head guards and doing it with 8-ounce gloves. And, uh, and, you know, I've got a feeling Mick, first two or three rounds, it'll be nip and tuck. I think there won't be much in it because Jordan's movement and stuff will give him, a, give him a bit of problems. But I think Mick eventually will sort of cut the ring off, work him down, and I think he might get to him sort of seven, eight rounds. Well, Belfast's always a good fight week. The atmosphere is always electric. We look forward to seeing, obviously, Cameron and hopefully getting some updates from yourself, Chantel, um, Jack Cattrall, Akeem Fiers and everybody in the gym. Appreciate you giving us this opportunity and we'll catch up soon. Cheers, pal. Thank you.